I am drowning in Idex. Actually, now that I say that out loud, that, that doesn't sound too bad. Yo, what? Actually, maybe you should jump in. The water's fine. Woohoo! You know, for whatever else 2020 is going to be remembered for, and honestly, to my memory, it was a real quiet year. I just kind of stayed at home. Definitely didn't, like, stress eat way too much. Yeah, 2020. But whatever else it was known for, 2020 will be remembered by me as the year that everybody seemed to have an IDEX 3D printer to show off. Actually, this is all a bit too much. Let me just... So for those who don't already know, IDEX is an acronym that stands for Independent Dual X extruders because IDE was already taken in an adjacent space. And it's a way of delivering two materials into one print. Now, the advantage of doing two materials in a single print has been known since the beginning of 3D printing, and some of the very earliest 3D printers did that by default, but the way that they did it was often by taking two nozzles and putting them on the same carriage. So they rode together and they just extruded from one and then extruded from the other and this created some problems for instance while one nozzle was printing the other nozzle was sitting there idle but it still had heat so the material would sometimes drool out of it a little bit leaving ugly marks at the time a couple of different solutions were attempted like for instance additional hardware was added that would rock the inactive head out of the way and that was an okay solution but it was difficult if your nozzles weren't tightened exactly to the right amount that it it didn't cause the second one to fall down too far and gouge or things like that they would also try software solutions like putting an ooze wall around your print that would hopefully wipe off the nozzle prints like this chessboard were just impossible to get to look right with a dual-headed system with both of the nozzles locked together. But IDEX addressed these problems by taking the carriage that had both of the extruders mounted on them and breaking it apart, giving each motor its own drive so that it can move independently of the other one. This fixed the problem of the nozzle being in the way because while one nozzle is in there printing and doing its thing, the other one is sitting out of the way waiting for its turn for the first one to get out of the way and then to come in and do its job. But it also created some exciting new possibilities because now you could have both heads moving at the same time, printing two copies of the same thing. and. You know, really, since as long as the Y movement is the same, we could potentially have them both go in opposite directions and create a mirrored copy of the thing that you want to print. Kind of like these spiral chess pieces. One of them spirals one way, one of them spirals the other, and they were both printed at the same direction, which makes them perfect for putting opposite each other in a chessboard. But IDEX also does have its challenges. For instance, yes, the two heads could crash into each other if your G-code wasn't carefully configured to make sure that that won't happen. Also, if you pushed the build plate as big as you could do, well, there was a portion that the one head just can't reach, making your effective build plate a lot smaller because you've got to cut off the one side and the other if you're doing a multi-material print and if you're doing copy mode or mirror mode you get that area back but again it takes a large build plate and makes it a little bit smaller than you might expect of course having access to idex means more than just being able to make 3d models that have multiple colors in them but it also means that you can do dissolvable supports making it possible to make objects with a support structure that is solid that you can print beautiful bottom layers on and then you throw that into water or whatever dissolves that material away and then it goes away and you've got a perfect support structure on there. It's, it's a wonderful option and a wonderful capability. 
And it's only because you have two distinct nozzles that you can do that because one can be kept at one temperature and one can be kept at another temperature and, and you don't have to have the same material going through it. It's, it's really the best and most consumer friendly way to do this for now. And I say for now because there is a technology on the horizon that kind of threatens the development that we've had with IDEX, and that is tool changers. So maybe if you're looking at this and, and you're thinking, well, do I want to get an IDEX or do I want to wait? Of course, if you're just somebody who's just getting into 3D printing and you really don't know what you're going to use it for, then a regular single nozzle 3D printer will probably work well for you. But if you are a designer, you know, there just aren't enough 3D models that take advantage of multi-material printing right now. So if you're ready and now's the time, don't wait, get an IDEX. Quick note from the editing desk here with some thoughts that I, I felt I needed to add before we closed out this video. One of the biggest advantages to these multi-headed 3D printers, and this carries over from back when the heads were both mounted together, but you've got two fully functional extruder mechanisms on your 3D printer. And one of the most common causes of downtime in 3D printing is something goes wrong with the extruder mechanism or feed head, the nozzle terminally jams, your PTFE tube just wears out over time. And you're, you're kind of stuck waiting for a part to arrive for you to put it in your 3D printer and your 3D printer is down but not so with these multi-headed machines. You just switch over to the other head, print with it for a while until the part arrives and you're back to fully functional. So you never have downtime or you have a lot less downtime with these. It's that assurance of redundancy. Also, you don't really need to be a designer to take advantage of multi-material processes. You can fairly easily uh, in, in the slicer, a lot of the times, take a 3D model and cut it and say this part's one color and this part's another. I recently released the writer's blocks, printer blocks that have letters on them. And, and, and while they work in single color, being able to take and make the letters in another color really makes them stand out. And you might think, well, I can do that easily enough if I just, you know, change the filament. Yeah, well, try and do that when you're printing an entire five plates of them all at once. You, it's a 24 hour print. You're gonna be sitting there all night long waiting for the right time to flip it. Or you can just in the slicer, cut it and say, I want this part to be one color, that part to be the other, and then go to bed and wake up in the morning with a full plate. It's very exciting when it happens. Are you gonna use both heads at the same time all the time? No, not really. It's, it's, it's something that when you use it, you're like, oh man, I'm so glad that I have this. Like I said, I found a lot of uses for them. I've been using them since I started in 3D printing and I'm excited to have them. Now, which of the 3D printers that I showed earlier would I recommend? As much as I love the large build volume of the JG Maker and the large build volume of the Kaiwu's new IDEX, both of those machines came to me as beta machines. So they had problems and I don't know what machine you will get. It might be better. It's probably going to be better because that's, that's the point of having a beta is that I beta test it and say, Hey, this is you know broken and they fix it. But the Flash Forge Creator Max 2, I use that 3D printer all the time, like repeatedly because I can trust it because it just works. They took all of the problems that I talked about with, you know, cutting off the build plate and the heads crashing. They solved those problems in the software, in the flash print software. If you want to do mirror mode, you set it in the software and then you just run the G code and it shows you in the software, okay, this is how it's going to work. And there's no guesswork. I like the Flash Forge Creator Max 2. I wish it were a lot bigger, but I like the Flash Forge Creator Max 2. There you go. There's the information, and I hope that that's useful to you. Now, here's a quick outtake of me accidentally bumping the 3D printer that I was filming with and what happened next. And <laughs> breaking it apart, giving each... Whoop. Well, that's the end of the video, but wait, before you go, while you're checking out this cool thing posted by one of you on the What You Making channel on my Discord, 
Why don't you open up the cards and see what deep dive into the topics of this video you can do. And this is really cool. Yeah, I really enjoy it when people connect with me on social media. That's why I've got links to all the socials in the description and I hope you'll check them out. I've also got a Patreon which you can check out here and I'll tell you a little secret about the suggested videos. This is the one that YouTube thinks that you'll like. This is the one though that I think you'll like. Which one of us is right? Only one way to know for sure, gotta watch them both. And remember, safety first, because I really do care about you, and see you next time.